So, we're here at the Sasquatch Outpost in Bailey, Colorado with uh, owner Jim Myers. And uh, Jim and I have known each other for a long time. We put on conferences together here in Colorado. I'm out here again. We never did an interview like this before, but uh, Jim, thanks for having us. You're welcome. Thank uh, you. Jim, tell us a little bit about your background because I, I think it's interesting how you got here into Bailey coming from Africa. Okay. Well, I grew up in Africa. My parents were missionaries. I moved there when I was 11, stayed in Africa, went to boarding school. This was in Kenya. Went to boarding school all my high school years, graduated, came back to the States for college. Then I worked for two, three years, and then I went back to work in the same field myself for 20 years in Senegal in West Africa. And then I, we moved to France and uh, we had a home in France for 10 years and then we moved to Bailey. So France to Bailey, it's kind of a normal wow. progression. <laughs> How did you find Bailey? So we, we moved to the States in like 2009. Um, I had hit burnout in a big way in France and we came here for a break. Uh, I had the opportunity to get some counseling, which was awesome. And during the week, we didn't have much to do, so Daphne and I would drive up the mountain and just play, just go fishing, go hiking. And we drove through Bailey multiple times, and we actually moved first to Conifer, and then we moved to Bailey. And uh, this building was a store that was built in 1878. Should have been torn down, should have been condemned. It was in terrible shape, but we decided to make it a grocery store, and one thing led to another, and now it's the Sasquatch Outpost. So, so you spent a majority of your life in Africa. Yes. And kind of a haphazard way, you end up in Bailey. So how did you ever get an interest in Bigfoot? Legend of Boggy Creek. When it came out in 1972, I was 10 years old. Went to see it in the movie theater like everybody did. Scared me to death at 10 years old. But it got me thinking because they portrayed it as a true story, and it is. And so I'm, I'm watching this movie and I'm thinking, are these things real? Can there really be monsters like this in the woods? So let me move to Africa. I couldn't do anything about that interest all those years. When we moved back here in 2009, I, and actually it was about 2012, we were rebuilding the store. I met my first eyewitness who lived about three miles from here. She and her best friend had seen a Bigfoot. Took her to coffee. I'm sure she wondered, what does this guy want? And totally credible person, businesswoman. Story was believable. So I thought, that's fascinating. Then finding Bigfoot came to town to do an episode. So I went there, met all the actors. Um, there was like 10 people stood up and told stories about seeing Bigfoot somewhere around here. And I said to Daphne, we need to capitalize on this. So that, that got my interest. And then I started meeting people and then started doing research. And so that's all I do now. It's my full-time job. So for people who don't know, about 45 minutes west of Denver on Highway 285 is this little great town called Bailey. Now, I, I first walked into this place when it was a store and Jim had some <laughs> notoriety in the Bigfoot world. But what he has done to this store is epic. And he built a museum in the back with artifacts and tracks and things that a lot of people may, may drive by and just think it's a roadside attraction not worth stopping by. Honestly, I've told hundreds of people about this location over the years and everyone comes back and says, oh my gosh, that, that was so fun. We had such a good time. And then just in the last couple of years, he's upgraded it even more. So, and if you're lucky enough to, Jim will be here. If not, his wife Daphne is almost always here, and she mm -hmm. has as much knowledge as Jim about this whole arena, so stop by. But one of the things that uh, kind of surprised me is that at the time, I was living maybe 25 mm -hmm. minutes down the road, and when I drove up here, I never even realized there was all this Bigfoot activity. <laughs> yeah. And there's tons around here. I would say this is Bailey here, if you can see it on the on the camera, but you can see all these pins represent somebody's somebody's experience 
So within 15 miles of Bailey, there's been 20 encounters at least, visual encounters. So, but I'm convinced, Dave, I could have my store anywhere in the Rocky Mountains and there would be just as much activity around it. It's just because we happen to be in Bailey. People see something near Bailey, so who are they going to tell? They come to the store. So um, I hear about stuff all over Colorado. I mean, it's unbelievable how many sightings there are. So there's going to be a lot of people that watch this that really don't have a good knowledge base about Bigfoot, Sasquatch topic, and they've watched the media, and a lot of it is <laughs> not true. So if you're a novice out there and you want to get some knowledge about the Bigfoot arena, if you're a citizen who doesn't have a lot and you're thinking, well, how do I know they're telling me the truth or they're telling me, what's your gauge about who's honest, who's not in this Bigfoot world? <laughs> That's a loaded question. The, the, the Bigfoot community is a, I call, I, I think of it as a dysfunctional family. There's, there's all kinds of rivalries and territorialism and things that go on and people don't like each other and publicly talk about that. I mean, online, in conferences, you know, publicly slam people. And to me, it's a, it's a shame because if we could all combine our, our individual knowledge into a one database or something, we'd be light years ahead of where we are. But everybody's got their own little corner, and they want to keep their own little corner. People come back in the in the museum here, and they say, "Can I take pictures?" I say, "Take as many pictures as you want. Post them, you know, because to me, this is this is knowledge for everybody. And the more knowledge that's out there, the better. I think the safer people will be when they go hiking if they're aware of this. And so, but as far as who's honest and who's not." You're honest, Dave. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. But, you know, there's, there, there's many controversial characters within the Bigfoot world. And I think what happens is people, some of them get a lot of notoriety. They're on the news a lot. And they're, they're saying things that are bizarre, to be honest. Not that Bigfoot isn't bizarre in reality. They are. But... And so people hear these things and they think, well, if that person is a leader in this community, then they must all be kooks. That's the problem. And so I tell people when they come in the store, in the, in the store part, I have lots of fun. I make t-shirts that say, Bigfoot doesn't believe in you either. Um, Bigfoot saw me and no one believes him. I mean, I have a lot of fun. It's all tongue in cheek. But I tell people, as soon as you cross into the museum, it's all serious because I'm trying to educate people. I'm not making fun of the topic anymore. So there should be a big difference between the store and the museum. Now, what do you tell the person who says, well, if Bigfoot was real, then our government would be talking about it and they'd have protection zones and everyone would know. <laughs> I, I tell them, I, I believe there is an intentional effort to keep this information away from the public. I know that the government knows. I know of national forests, large million acre national forests that are tracking Bigfoot sightings by their rangers, have databases. Why do they not get that information out? It's a great question. I'm still trying to figure it out. You and I have talked about this at length. There's an effort to keep people from knowing that this hominin, this, these people, that we call Sasquatch, live in the woods. They're everywhere. People encounter them all the time, but either they don't talk about it or if they talk about it, they're laughed at or mocked. And so I'm convinced personally that, that I haven't figured out why. probably has to do with money. It always does. But that there's reasons why the authorities don't want this information out there. However, I think the day is coming, and I don't think it's very far away, when just like the UFO phenomenon, after decades and decades of the government doing research, they finally came out and said, all right, there are UFOs, we know it, here's some footage, etc." Well, nobody was surprised by that. But the same thing is gonna happen with Sasquatch by maybe the National Forest Service, maybe the Parks Board, some government agency, their hand is gonna get forced some way and they're gonna have to say, 
yeah, we know they're out there. But if they if they can't control them and they can't protect us from them, they don't want to talk about it because people are going to expect them to do both, and they can't. These are not these. This isn't a a tribe that they can just corral and say you're going to live here and that's it. You know. So. Probably the most famous footage in the world of a Bigfoot, Sasquatch, Snowman, whatever. Patterson Gimlin, mm -hmm. 1967, Bluff Creek, just north of Hoopa in California. Uh, I've heard, I've had so many people come up to me <laughs> at conferences and say, Oh, Dave, we knew that was crap from the beginning. Why are you being stupid and supporting that? What do you say to that, Jim? I tell them, you don't know what you're talking about. And... The main reason is in 1967, nobody had the technology to build a suit like that. Even the guy that was the suit designer for the Planet of the Apes finally admitted he could not have built that suit. It's just, it was too complicated. I just watched a special, ironically. Bob Gimlin was talking about the, the Bluff Creek film, and this other guy comes on and they interview, and he says, he was the guy in the suit. And he said, yeah, they, they swore me to secrecy. You know, I had to put it on this way. And this guy's like five feet, 10 inches tall. Patty was more than seven feet tall. Based on her footprints and everything, they estimated around 900 pounds. I mean, if you, if you study the movie, you can see her muscles moving under her skin as she walks. She's got breasts for Pete's sake. Why make a female if you're gonna make a suit? Why not make a male? with a flat chest, so much easier. So I just tell people, look, I understand what's been said. I understand that, you know, all these people say Roger Patterson had a deathbed confession that it was all fake. But Bob Gimlin is still staying true to saying it's real 50, 60 years ago, and he's never changed his story. And so um, I tell him it's real. I, I can assure you that it's real. If you don't think so, that's fine. I can't convince everybody. But 1967, we couldn't build a suit like that. A lot of people don't know about, about 10 years ago, I spent a whole day with Mrs. Patterson mm -hmm. in Washington, and uh, one of the nicest ladies ever. And I asked her about, you know, those rumors about Roger saying something on his deathbed. She goes, Dave, <laughs> that's just, he, no way. And I said, had, did, was there ever that private moment between you and him where he might have said mm -hmm. something to you that made you question the authenticity? And she goes, no, in fact, it was just the opposite. Mm -hmm. He would talk my ear off about what he saw and what Bob saw out there. And when you really look and, and you sit with this woman all day like I did, you know, she just reeks of credibility and there's no, no reason to question her authenticity. Why would she lie? Well, and, and the biggest thing to me about that 67, 67 film is it was real 35 millimeter film right it wasn't it, it wasn't digital right it couldn't today if that film came out you'd question it because it could be digitized sure. and not changed and things and in 67 they just didn't have the technology to do it so and some of those landmarks are still there today that she walks by so yeah it wasn't cgi no no so it wasn't. so um you got the patterson gimlin film you got dr ketchum's dna study yeah um, which I talk about all the time um, because I think that is one of the best proofs of the existence of Sasquatch even though the scientific community poo-pooed it but I know you were at the origins of that study and and I know the other guys who submitted samples I know you were all extremely careful in in what you submitted for the study there was no contamination and I just think it was more <laughs> If public knowledge is here, that took public knowledge to hear and, and they just weren't ready for it. The scientific community was not ready to admit it. They still aren't. That that DNA was not a human contamination. It's human because they're part human. So, you know, it's a shame that it didn't get the credibility that it deserved. And, and uh, well, so we started off that study, Scott Carpenter, Mm -hmm. And I worked together in the outdoors to get hair. And we used the, just like the most basic, stupid method that they used to get bear hair. And that was you turn, put tape on a big tree inside out, sticky side out, put something in, it, in the fork of the tree, mm -hmm. 
and when it leans in, it'll pull the hair out and you want the follicles, and there's the mitochondrial. Well, we aren't the sharpest knives in the drawer, and when we started this, we made a public outcry to other researchers saying, hey, we need some samples. Mm -hmm. We ended up with 110. But the point being is that I always ask myself, why would it take a bunch of amateurs to do this? Why doesn't the scientific community do it? The answer I get back in my mind is that it's already been done. They didn't like the results hmm. and they won't publicize it. Didn't like what about the results? That it came back human. Okay. Just yeah. like ours. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if it came back an ape or a gorilla, oh yeah, well you have a North American ape. Mm -hmm. No, there's no North American ape. But anyhow, that's my two cents on that. So Jim, when you have people go back into your museum here, what's the one thing that they want, that you want them to glean when they're back here? Well, I want them to realize that one, this is not a new phenomenon. This is not a 20th century phenomenon, 21st century. Do you have the only Bigfoot in North America in right here in Bailey somewhere? The only, the only Bigfoot? Yeah. I get to ask that all the time, <laughs> probably a thousand times. People come in, they'll walk through the museum, they walk out, they come up to the desk and they say, oh, there's more than one. And I'm like, you did take elementary school biology, right? I mean, it takes a male and a female. And it's like, and I talk about this in the video that I show, if there's one Bigfoot, he has to get to every single state in the U.S. How would he do that? Or she do that? And so... I say, yes, there's more than one. Yes, they have to have a viable breeding population, gene population, and there's thousands, at least maybe hundreds of thousands of them in the U.S. I know around Bailey, if you, we know of, I mean, I have sightings in every direction you go from Bailey. That can't be one family group. It has to be multiple family groups. That's one little town in one state in the country. Multiply that out by the whole country, I don't, who, who can guess how many there are, but, um, but yeah, people think there's one, but I want people to be educated that this is not new. I have, I show the history of it. I talk about the Teddy Roosevelt incident with Bauman and, and I talk about show newspaper clippings, some of that from, from your book, um, about wild men and giants. And so I want them to know this is not new. There is evidence, um, you great i was grateful that you loaned us all those tracks from all over the country all those plaster casts um we have samples of what they do to trees we have photographs we've we've so my goal is to create an environment where people would say if they're a skeptic they would say wow i didn't know there was this much about sasquatch and two if they're on the fence i want to push them over to say yeah, they, they have to be real because there can't be this much evidence. There can't be this many people lying about what they've seen. It's just not possible. So educate. That's, that's what I hope to do in here. So since this is on a kind of a major highway going through Colorado, you must have had some pretty interesting people through here over the years. We had lots of interesting people. I, ha I haven't had any movie stars. I had a guy come in one time and said he was Johnny Depp's uncle and he came a couple times. A lot of people like that. Um, a lot of people don't identify themselves when they come in. They'll come in, we'll talk, they'll leave and somehow I'll find out later, you know, did you know that that was so-and-so? And so, you know, I, I'm waiting for the day that somebody who I know who is a movie star, say, or whatever, when you come into the store, people are like, it was so funny. I have to tell this story. Somebody was buying three of your books the other day, and you and I were on the phone talking about you coming down here. So I'm ringing them out. I get up, and I, I got off the phone. And they're like, oh, I just love Dave's books. And I said, yeah, that was Dave on the phone. And they look at me like, you're so full of it. I said, no, that really was <laughs> Dave on the phone. It was just a funny coincidence, but, you know, I think in the museum, since we built it in 2016, we've had about 50,000 people go through it. Wow. So for a little town like Bailey, that's a lot of people. And uh, so people call us from around the country now. They say, we're coming to Colorado. We want to make sure you're open, that we can come to the outpost. And so that's great. We love that. We love that people want to come and experience this. And Do you do anything outside of the museum? 
Oh yeah, I, I go out, I do my own research outside with a bunch of people that I've recruited over the years or kind of recruited themselves. And I'll take people out in the woods. Um, I can never guarantee anything, obviously. I don't control Sasquatch, nobody does. And there's some areas I won't take them to where I'm trying to build a relationship with the Sasquatch that are in that area, but I could take them anywhere around here on any trail and likely have a vocalization, some kind of a knock, um, you know, trees snapping, and we've had all that happen. So I'll take people out overnight. Just not a lot of people want to go out after dark, understandably. And so... Me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've never gone out at night. So, you know, it's... I've, I've often said this to people, other researchers, I say, I don't know of any researchers, and I know a lot of researchers who are out there all the time, I don't know of anybody who's ever been hurt. We've all been scared, that's normal, but I don't know of anyone who's ever been physically hurt um, or disappeared. Now, should that happen to a researcher I know, I might have to reevaluate if I'm going to do the outside stuff. But for now, um, we've had some crazy, weird experiences. If I tell people that come in the store, they wouldn't even believe me. So some of that stuff I don't even talk about. But um, yeah, I mean, I'll speak occasionally at a conference or something like that. But um, so it's fun. I don't know anybody else that has this as their full-time job, so... <laughs> so one of the things that uh, people will probably have a hard time believing, but the, one of the reasons I am here this weekend is that you have like a super world-famous Russian Bigfoot researcher here this yeah. weekend. And you think this little town of Bailey, how do you attract somebody like that? <laughs> Igor Bortsev, I mean, yeah. who could believe it? I know, I know. And he's known, literally, like he said, around the world. So, um, because he knows some people in Nebraska who we know, and I was at that conference where he spoke, and we just talked about, hey, why don't you drive him down to Bailey, and we'll have him speak again. And so, that's what's happening tomorrow. So, I've been in a lot of Bigfoot stores around the U.S., and honestly, I mean, we haven't been here for a couple of months, but when we came here today, I mean, your inventory is phenomenal, the stuff you have. <laughs> Isn't it crazy how much Bigfoot stuff there is? It's unbelievable. <laughs> and uh, besides that, he has one of the best collections of Bigfoot books I've seen anywhere. And the biggest collection of Dave Politis Missing 411 books is in this store. That's right. So if you live in Colorado and you don't want to pay postage, you come here. He's the only supplier of my mm -hmm. books in Colorado. Mm -hmm. So... Speaks of the relationship. Um, so, Jim, I appreciate the interview. Yeah, is, you bet. Is there anything, if the people came to this part of Colorado, that they could make a, a day out of this excursion? Sure. I mean, they could come and spend a couple of hours here, obviously. Um, we're, we're actually thinking of doing something fun of nights in the museum where we'll turn off all the lights and bring people in. And I'll tell stories as I take them through the museum. Um, just a different way to talk about what's in here. But um, yeah, if they wanted to come, I have a lot of people come, they'll visit the store, the museum, then I'll take them out in the afternoon and show them things during the daytime or we'll go out at night. Um, easily you can make a day of it or they can just go on a hike. And then people are always asking me, where can I go? <laughs> where can I go to see Bigfoot? And I'm like, anywhere, honestly, go to any trail, you might see a Bigfoot. but. I'll give them, we have an excerpt of the map that we sell. It just shows, again, I'm not trying to hide this information. I'm not trying to keep it all to myself. People want to know where we've seen a Bigfoot, just come in and look at the map. It's all there. Yeah. So, yeah, they can easily make a day of it. So, I know you have a Facebook presence, uh, Sasquatch Outpost on Facebook. What's your website? It's SasquatchOutpost.com. In Bailey, Colorado, Jim and Daphne Myers. Jim, thanks a million. You bet. Thank you.